All right. We on? You got me? Okay. Just making sure everything's working right. What's that? Don't don't start the message yet. Okay. It should be going. So how do you get on there? Yeah, she's on live. We're going live here in just a few minutes. Those of you who are watching live, we're going to be coming on just a few minutes. There we go. Okay. Good to go. Ready to go. All right. Good morning, everybody. Glad to see you. And um, hope that you're being blessed. And uh, I was watching. I was watching a little bit of the um, worship a few minutes ago. It was a powerful presence there. And so, I just want to say I'm, I apologize for for not being with you in person. But um, I'm battling some some stuff that's contagious called influenza A, and so I just didn't want to be around anybody. I'm feeling better today, but um, anyway, I do have a word for you guys. But I want to just play a little bit of flute and just um, just worship a few minutes more and uh, let God minister to us, eh? <laughs> Jesus, we just thank you for your presence. Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the gifts of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your word that's truth. Thank you for your presence that's within us and upon us and around us. We just thank you for doing great and mighty things. And everyone who's hearing this, just be touched. Everyone who's in the sound of this broadcast just be ministered to lord and i thank you for signs and wonders and miracles in the name of jesus transform lives lord cause the lost to be saved the sick to be healed and those that are discouraged to be full of your joy just bless us father thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah amen amen well i, I just have a few things to share with you guys this morning and uh, hope it blesses you. God's been speaking to me 
God's been speaking to me concerning um, our destiny, our purpose, um, the reason why that we do what we do in the kingdom of God, understanding the kingdom of God, and then understanding the will of God. Because a lot of times we get to a place to where, you know, uh, we see what somebody else does and we think, well, that's what we're supposed to do. And, and God's not... Uh, God's not into generic stuff. God's into genuine. And he's into uh, releasing in your life and my life the things that he designed us for, that we would walk that out. A lot of times that uh, people have to be in their late years till they ever figure it out. I mean, I'm still figuring it out. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not got it all figured out, but I do know that I'm at peace with God in the place that God has me, and I'm confirmed as, by God as a son of God. I'm a child of God. I'm in the kingdom of God. I'm destined. I'm purposed. Um, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Even though I got influenza, it's just a thing. It's just a thing. I know I'm doing the will of God because I'm getting attacked by the enemy. And so many times people get discouraged when they get a, uh, a word from God. You may get a fresh word from God or, or an encounter with God and you find out that, you know, all hell breaks loose. Of course hell's going to break loose because you're advancing. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the kingdom, the child of God. And so, yes, hell will break loose against you. When you begin to realize who you are in God, when you begin to, to grasp that and walk in that, and and you're purposefully walking you're not just you're not just ambling along and whatever comes along is okay and you know you're uh you know you're living by fate fate is not so that's that's crazy you you have the choice in your life to walk with god in the will that he prepared for you or you can walk your own way or you can allow circumstances that come against you to steer you away from <coughs> excuse me steer you out of the will of god now, a lot of people they're walking in a place of being to where they're um you know they're 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 in emotions they're moved by emotions or they're moved by the circumstances or you know whatever's happening around them uh that 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 dictates their identity or that dictates how they're going to act but see the child of god the kingdom person the purpose purposeful person that's walking in the spirit of God is not moved by circumstance. You're not moved by the things that come against you. You're not moved by what other people are doing or the trends that this world offers. I mean, it's so crazy. Even the church, you know, the modern church is got up in trends. They see what some mega church is doing down the road or over in some other big state or big, uh, big city and hey that's what we want to do because hey if we do that we're going to uh, grow in numbers we're going to be like them and you start a trend god god doesn't do trends god doesn't birth trends god god births genuine he he births original and he brings us forth with a word from him to do what he's called us to do and then we walk in it. And nobody else can do that because only you can do that. And we change the kingdom. We change the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of God. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to be world changers, nation shakers. We're called to turn upside down this world system, the, the government, the, the financial system, the religious system. The, all of that educational system, all that, the system of entertainment and sports, we're called to turn all that upside down and come under the authority of the kingdom of God. And see, if we can't get ourselves into under authority, and we can't get our, our own life in the place to where, you know, we're walking as a kingdom person, as we're walking in the kingdom of God as a child of God, then we're not going to change the world. We're not going to change nobody. And it don't matter how many verses in the Bible that we know. It doesn't matter how many scriptures that we can quote. If we're not walking them out, if we're not living them out, then they're not going to do anything for anybody. And so God's, God doesn't need to get us educated. God get, needs to have us transformed. 
You need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And how do you renew your mind? You renew you, your, your mind through the word of God and the spirit of God will make it alive in you. And see, a lot of people, they'll have it here. They'll have it here, but they have no spirit. The spirit has to birth it. The spirit has to manifest. The spirit has to cause it to, to produce the fruit. And if you have no spirit, you're none of his. The, the scriptures are clear to say that, that, that he that hath not the spirit ha, is not of God. And so we want to be filled with the spirit. You can't find your identity, your purpose, and be operating the kingdom of God unless you're filled with the spirit. And I mean, I don't mean that you go, I don't mean that. I mean filled with the spirit, manifesting the fruit of the spirit, manifesting the supernatural uh, works of God. In other words, you're not the person that gets angry in the Walmart checkout line because it's a long line. You're not the person that gets angry and manifests, you know, something ungodly because uh, your bank account, something happened to it. You're not the person that when you go to the car lot or you go get your car worked on and they find out that it's uh, more than what you thought it was or there's more things wrong with it and you just come unglued and manifest and all that and then you 10 minutes later you want to invite them to go to your church well nobody wants to go to your church they want to go to god they want to see god everybody wants to see god in us and that's what we're called to do you know the ministry's outside the church the the, the and the church is just a system that's just the place that you go and you gather together and you receive uh, impartation you receive encouragement you receive study and word and all those kind of things that the gifts manifest in in a corporate setting that you can might go out and and do the works that god called you to do and that's every day in everyday life in everyday life see now we're purposed to be making disciples and what is it, it that's the one thing that we can make God commanded us to make disciples. Jesus gave us the great commission. In Matthew chapter 28, he said, Go and make disciples of all nations. What is a disciple? A disciple is somebody who's, who's under the discipline or the authority of Jesus. He's one that's being, being ministered to and transformed. He's allowing the word of God to change him. He's allowing the spirit of God to motivate him. That's what disciple is, see? Disciple is not somebody that's just a believer. There's a lot of believers out there, but there's not many disciples. And see, many times we'll commit things to people, and they're not really being discipled. They're not discipling. They're not even got the heart to be a disciple. They just want to get to heaven. Just give me enough to get me to heaven. But God didn't call us to that. The earth is groaning. The earth is groaning. The creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Not the, not the believers, not the born again, the sons of God, the sons of God. Some of the things that I, I've, I've seen in the word is just is powerful. I've read these things for years and God's given him in a whole new revelation. And in Jeremiah chapter one, if you have a Bible, you can go there with me. I just want to read some things that God purposed in the prophet Jeremiah. And when you want to know, you know, you say, well, what is it that we're supposed to do? Well, we're a prophetic people. Prophetic means that you're inspired by God to speak, to talk, to, to move, to act, to change, whatever. It's prophetic. Prophetic means it comes from God. It's not from man, and it comes out of us. It's a divine inspiration. And we're a prophetic people. <coughs> Excuse me. We're a prophetic people. And the, and the spirit of prophecy, Revelation says, the spirit of prophecy is Jesus. And Jesus is in, it, is in us. And we can, we can prophesy. What prophesy means, what does God say and I say it? What is God moving in me and I do it? That's prophetic, see? It's not that I'm led by my, my own strength or my own. So when God spoke to Jeremiah, he gave him a prophetic vision. He gave him prophetic vision. How many of you have a prophetic vision? Something that comes straight from God. Not what you heard from, you know, uh, 
some preacher somewhere. I'm talking about a prophetic word from God. What did God speak to you? He gave you some purpose. Amen. He spoke to He spoke to Jeremiah and in verse 4, chapter 1, he says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. A voice unto the nations. My prophet, God's prophet, not man's prophet. Because he was, before he was ever born, he didn't know how to prophesy. He didn't know how to do anything. He, did, he wasn't existing, but he was already existing in the mind of God. And so when God birthed him into the world, he already had his purpose on him and in him. He had the DNA from God, the word from God to do what he is purposed and called to do in the earth. And so he, he said he sanctified. In other words, God had already chosen him. God created him. God fashioned him. He formed him in his mother's womb. And he sanctified him. The word sanctified means that he was set apart for God. So see, you're set apart for God. You were set apart before the... This is not just for Jeremiah. This is just his, his personal word that God gave him concerning his purpose. But you were purposed. I was purposed. Every human being has a purpose. We come into this world and with the DNA that God designed us with to do something in the earth how many people waste their purpose how many people waste their time they waste you know all kinds of stuff you know jesus said hey what does it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul and you can put that in soul you can say your reason for being your reason for being here you gained the whole world, but yet you, you lost your reason, your soul, your being, your core. You know, the, the natives, in, the natives uh, our, our friends in South Dakota, the Lakota people, they, they say when someone's confused, they're messed up, they're not walking, they've lost their center. And that's scriptural. You, 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 you haven't, you, have you lost your center? Have you lost your focus? Have you lost your vision? Have you lost your... Your, your will to do what God has asked you to do. And many times you get struggling and you don't realize that you're struggling against the forces of darkness. You're struggling against the powers of darkness. The devil doesn't want you to know your destiny. He doesn't want you to know your purpose. Here's some of the things that God did, he also ordained him. So you say, well, when does someone get ordained? Well, you ordain when you get hands laid on you and they give you a, a certificate. Now, you ordained before the foundation of the world. I was ordained by God before the foundation of the world. I just didn't know it. I just didn't know it. it took me 30 years before I ever got saved. It took me another, I don't know, I don't know how far, I, when I got saved, I mean, I, I realized I was born again and all that, and I had a communication with God, but I didn't know what I was doing. And then I got ordained years later by, you know, an organization. Actually, twice I've been ordained. But the thing is, I was ordained by God before I ever was born. Before the earth was even formed and created, I was ordained. How about you? You were too. You were ordained by God before the foundation of the world. You were in God, in his heart, in his thoughts, in, in his being. And he already knows your end. He knows the end from the beginning. He, he knows the steps that you're going to take. He knows everything. So he ordained you. He ordained Jeremiah. And when the Lord said that to Jeremiah, he gave him an excuse. He said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. I'm just a child. He was speaking on his qualification. He was speaking on his maturity. You know what? You don't have to be too mature to get somebody saved. You say, you know, I, I, I've i never led nobody to Jesus. Why not? How were you led to Jesus? How did you, how did you get saved? Don't say that you're too immature to lead somebody to Jesus. Don't say that because that's a lie. That's what the devil wants you to believe, that you've got to go through 
you know, evangelistic training, or you got to go through this or go through that. Did you know that you can sit beside somebody and just start talking to them? And if you listen to the Spirit, if you will hear the Word of the Lord, and you will listen to that prophetic voice inside of you, He will lead you to minister to that person. And if they're not saved, He will target that and He'll bring it out. All you have to do is respond to Him. All you have to do is let God use you. See? And so, and so when we're in the kingdom of God, we're walking in the kingdom of God, we have a kingdom mentality. What's God doing today? What's God, what's happening here? What's going to take place here? We're, who is it that I'm going to meet that is a divine connection? Who is it that I'm going to, to begin discipling? Who is it that I'm going to see get healed? Who is it that's going to get saved? Who is it that's going to get loved on or, or have their needs met? Maybe they're financially stretched, hurting or something, they don't have... Uh, money for food or whatever it is. I mean, God knows every need. And all we have to do is trust the Spirit of God in us. See? Don't give God excuses. Excuse is this. The definition of an excuse, it's a lie wrapped in the thin skin of reason. You have no excuse. I have no excuse. Mankind don't have no excuse because everything has been made for us and set for us. And it's all receivable, accessible, reachable, possible. Jesus said all things, not some things, all things are possible to him who, what? Believes believes so everything's accessible by my faith everything that god has ordained and set in into motion for me and for you is accessible by faith and without faith you know the next scripture without faith it's what it's impossible to please him hallelujah without faith you're not going to find your purpose you're not going to walk in purpose you got to believe him. Then the Lord said to him, Say not that I am a child, for you shall go to all that I shall send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. What did I just say? You just go about your daily things, be led by the Spirit, go somewhere, and what God says, you'll speak. What God tells you, you speak. Sometimes, you know, have you ever been in a, in a place, and this has happened to me, and I moved on it, you see somebody who's got a, a cane or a walker or a wheelchair or, or they've got some sort of infirmity. I've seen a lot of people and I knew they had cancer. I mean, the Spirit of God showed me that they were battling cancer. It, it, was, it was not outward that you could see it. You just knew it. You knew it by the, the word of knowledge and the discerning of the Spirit. And so just go up to them, you know, and start talking to them and, and say, Hey, I, I, um, I just see you're battling a sickness. And um, can I pray for you? And, you know, the tears well up in their eyes. They, immediately God touches them and they get healed. Or, or you know, uh, years ago I sat by a blind guy in Walmart and God told me to pray for him that he could see. And I start praying for him. I, I just asked him, I said, hey, man, I know you're blind. I said, can I pray for you to see? And he said, well, yeah. And so I prayed for him. And he saw. And I said, how do you see? He said, better. I said, let's, can I try it again? He said, yeah. And so I put my hand on him again and prayed and spoke to that blindness to go and just release the anointing of the Spirit of God, the love of God on him. And this dude, he, he, he started just shaking and shouting. He said, I can see, I can see, I can see. And his wife came up there because he was sitting in the bench his wife come up there just a little while later and and I'm, she's going what's what's happened what's wrong and he said i was blind but now i see god did that because god loves him and god cared about him but if i'd have been sitting in walmart thinking about myself 
and what I was doing and overlook that blind man sitting next to me and maybe I could have pitied him or said, oh, you know, too bad for that guy. I'm glad I'm not blind. I would have missed it. And this wasn't in no church service. This wasn't when the worship was real deep and sweet and, and everything. I mean, it was in the Walmart waiting on the other side of the cash registers waiting. And I was waiting for Frida. I spend most of my life waiting for Frida, praise God. I'm glad I waited for her. And this guy got healed. He got his eyesight back. He gave his wife his cane and he walked out. He grabbed the buggy and pushed it. Except he said, where's our car? Because I don't know where you parked. <laughs> Just point me in the direction where the car is at. Tell me what it looks like. I wonder if he drove. Because he didn't have no license, I'm sure. But anyway... If you listen to God, if you let the Holy Ghost use you, if you get sensitive to him and realize that you're in the kingdom of God and, and that God wants to advance his kingdom and establish his kingdom, he wants to see his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That was Jesus' prayer. That's not a crazy prayer. That's not a crazy prayer. To walk around healing the sick, raising the dead, comforting those that mourn and, and, and those that are depressed, getting them just encouraged and blessed and changed, saving the lost, opening the blind eyes. That's not crazy. That's kingdom. And God didn't call you to be the church. He called you to be the kingdom. He called you to be his sons and daughters. Church is a word. It's iglesias. It, it, I think it says Iglesias in the Greek, which means called out ones. Jesus only spoke, I think, three times in uh, about the church. He spoke hundreds of times about the kingdom. I think it's 236 times in the Gospels that Jesus talked to the kingdom. One of the signs of the kingdom is, he says, if I with the finger of God cast out devils, says the kingdom's come to you. That's one of the manifestations of the kingdom is the devil goes... And God comes in. The devil has to go and God has to come in because we are giving the devil marching papers. He can't own our children. He can't own our homes. He can't own our businesses. He can't own our, our cities, our towns, and our states. This country, he can't own this country because God said it's ours. He placed us in this nation and this is just supposed to be the kingdom of God under the rule of the kingdom of God. See, and so and so, that's the kingdom of God. We're kingdom people. I might preach. <laughs> the Lord told him he could speak, and then he told him, "Don't be afraid of their faces." He's basically giving him a confirmation, and he's coming against the fear that is in Jeremiah because he's afraid of what they think. But don't be afraid of their faces, Jeremiah. Don't be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. To deliver you what? The fear of man? How many out there is, is, is afraid of what other people think of you? You start operating in the kingdom principles. You start operating as a son and daughter of God in the fullness of the spirit. What, what you reckon people's going to think about you? Don't worry about it. They don't think that much of you anyway. Stop worrying about that. Get off yourself. Do what God tells you to do. I care what God thinks. I don't care what other people think. I could care less what other people. The only person I care what thinks is my wife. I care what Frida thinks. And I care what my children think and my grandchildren. I care in the sense of I love them and want to take care of them and be there for them, all those kind of things. But as far as like me doing for God and me being God's son and walking with God, I don't care what anybody thinks, whether I do it or not. It's, it's, it's what God has ordained in my life, and I'm going to do it, see? And so we got to recognize that. Don't have fear, man. God will deliver you. I feel there's someone right there. You're listening to me right now, and you are operating in the fear of man. You are so manipulated and so controlled by the fear of man 
that you can't be who God called you to be. You can't be who God ordained you to be. You're struggling with what they think, what she thinks, what the organization thinks. Some of you, if, if you're pastors out there right now, and I'm not just speaking for Buffalo Creek Fellowship, but whoever else is, is out there, are you under the domination of a denomination? Are you under the domination of a denomination? Are you under the hand of God being led by the Spirit of God and the vision that God has for you and your, your um, congregation and the people that God's called you to minister to? Don't have fear. In fact, in the name of Jesus, I bind that right now. I bind and I break the power of it and I speak the life of God into you right now. The life of God into you, which is love. And God loves you. He loves you as he created you to be. He doesn't love you as you're formed by other men's opinions. He loved you as he created you to be. Be who God created you to be. Let the love of God right now cast out all that fear. Know that he loves you. Know that he's with you. Know that he approves of you. Know that he wants to use you. Don't be dominated by denomination. Don't be dom de uh, dominated by the crowd, by the trend, by expectations of other men. In the name of Jesus, be free from that. Be free from that. That was free. Hallelujah. He said this. He said, The Lord put forth his hand and he touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. <coughs> I put my words in your mouth. <clears throat> I'm getting healed in the name of Jesus. This is all going out of me. He said, I put my words in your mouth. He said, see this day I've set you <clears throat> over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant, to build and to plant. Listen, you may be in a season of having to tear down. You may be in a season <clears throat> of having to build. You may, be, you may be in a season of having to throw down. You may be in a season of having to plow. You, you might be in all kinds of different seasons, but know that if you're in the will of God, if you're doing what he's called you to do, and you're operating in those gifts of the Spirit and, and the fullness of the Spirit, it's okay. It's okay, because it's going to take all of us to do the kingdom work. You do your part. I'm going to do my part. If you don't do your part, my part gets hurt. If I don't do my part, your part gets delayed. Amen. What good is it? What good is it for some for a, for a farmer to contract and get uh, people to go out and plow his field, and then he lets his seed sit in the granary or wherever it is. He had his land plowed, he had his place plowed, but he didn't get the seed planted. Or what good is it if he had it plowed, planted the seed, and he never put his, his water in, into it, or he never fertilized it? Then what happens if it all grows up and it goes bad on the stalk, goes bad on the vine, because he won't harvest it, he didn't harvest it, he didn't send the harvesters out. See, see, everybody has their part. Everybody has their part. And when you begin to walk in the prophetic, sometimes you have to pull down. You, you're walking in the prophetic purpose of God. You have to pull some things down. You're going to have to pull some strongholds down, some mindsets, some demonic junk that comes against it. There's demonic strongholds. We know that. There's demonic strongholds over Cleburne, Texas. Who knows? I don't really know exactly what it is. There's a way to find it out. God will show you. But I'm telling you what, there's strongholds. There's strongholds in people's lives. There's strongholds in communities. There's things that happened in the land that caused it to be what it is or that opened up the demonic to this land and, 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 and allowed it to, to control and operate in people's lives. Generational stuff and all that junk like that. And, and God, because he said, you know what, we got to tear that down. He says, he'll send us in, and he says, I want you to root that out. Intercessors, pray, pray. And he says, I send you in to root that out, to speak against it, to declare over the land, declare over the people, declare over. Amen? Go in, go in. Not just, not just do something because it might attract people, 
I'm not, I mean, that's not a bad thing, but I'm going to do something that's going to tear down the, the strongholds in their lives that's keeping them from God, that keeps them from God, see? And so we've got to recognize that as, as a prophetic kingdom person, God wants us to redeem the land. Go redeem the land. Go take it back. Go take it back for the kingdom of God. Did you know that the ground can be, was cursed because of Adam's sin? It was cursed, right? Every time that there's bloodshed on a, on a piece of property, on a, on a land, on a place, just like when, when Cain slew Abel, you can read it in Genesis, I think it's the second chapter, when Cain slew Abel, it says that, hey, the blood of, God said, the blood of your brother cries out from the ground. What does that mean? That means that life, the blood of, of, of the innocents, blood that was shed on land, what cries out to God? What means that's an opening and a place for the demonic? It's a doorway, or whatever you want to call it. Some call it a portal. Some call it a principality or power or whatever. I mean, I just call them strongholds that are there. They set for ancient years and years and years strongholds. Well, you got to, your purpose is to go bust it down, go tear it down, come against it, come against it. Amen. I mean, let. Let the peoples are, are, they're deaf. They're deaf to hearing from God because of the oppression over them. There's an oppression over people. Can't hear. We got to tear that down. We got to break that down. Move in the power of God. Move in the gifts of God. Move in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And manifest the kingdom of God as a son and a daughter of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Shukalaba. Shita. And you got to go forth and do that. You can't just sit and expect it to happen it's not going to happen it's not going to happen there's better ones than us that's been here for longer and it didn't happen for them but there is a day and a season and a time and it's now these are the last days and i'm telling you what the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of god why would the earth groan why would creation groan why because it was cursed why would creation groan? Why would the land be hostile? Why would the land be wanting to see the sons of God? Why? Because we come in and we take authority and we redeem the land. We redeem the things that were stolen. We redeem everything that God created that we can bring forth. And the kingdom of the gospel, the kingdom must be preached in all nations. And when it is, then the son of man will come. Then Jesus will come. Then the rapture will take place. But how we preach the gospel to those that have no ears to hear it because they're being blinded or they're deaf because of the strongholds over them, the oppression. We got to walk in spiritual authority and, and break that stuff up. Amen. I don't know how long I'm going. I'm, 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 I'm I got to look at my watch to my clock. Oh, it's only 11 o'clock. Praise God. Um, Anyhow, then he said, he put forth his hand and, 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 and he said, he put him over nations and over kingdoms. What's your nation? What's your nation? Number one, I'll tell you what your nation is. Your family, your kin, your generations. How are you making an impact in, in how do you make an impact in your family that's going to last for generations to come? What are you pouring into your children, into your grandchildren, into your cousins, your aunts, your uncles? What, what, what are you pouring into all of them that's going to see them be kingdom people for generations to come? See, we, I was talking to Pastor Jack. Uh, I was talking to him yesterday about him maybe, you know, writing a book, a record of, of how, you know, he... he the testimony of faith in his life of how God led him and, and, and he, you know, became the 2002 uh, world champion roper and all that and the, and the things that he had to do and, and the disciplines he had to do and the sacrifices he had to make and, and believe in God and going on and, and, and he made a, a, a difference in that rodeo world because of his testimony. Now that's a legacy that he leaves to his children's 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 children 
What are you leaving for your family? Is it a legacy of faith? Is it a legacy of miracles? Is it a legacy of, of the fruit of the Spirit? Um, being benevolent in, in all your ways. Giver. Are you a giver? Does your family know you to be a giver? Are you a tightwad, stingy, so stingy that, you know, God would try to get you to release money and you never would? You know what? That's not right. That's not right. I, I, I believe that we should ha teach our kids to earn and to work and to labor and all that stuff. But I'm going to tell you what. If my children have need of something and I have it, I'm going to be a giver to them. I'm not going to spoil them and ruin them, but I'm going to be a giver to them. I'm not going to say, you can't have what I got. I'm not, and when, when my brother has need of something, I'm going to give it to him. See, and, that, and, that's, and that's a legacy. That's a legacy. That they say, I remember, I remember Papa. Papa would give you knives. He gave you everything. He gave you jewelry. He gave you all this stuff. He did all these things. He gave, gave, gave. Always, my grandson, every time I see him, I give him money. He said, why give him money? Because I love him. I love him. I don't want him to be without no money. I give him money. He said, did he earn it? He don't have to earn it. It's part of my legacy to give to him. What is your legacy you're giving to your kids? What is the legacy you're giving to your family? How about your friends? Those of you who don't, maybe don't have family, you got friends, people that are connected with you, that you're in covenant with. What are you giving the covenant people that you're with? What have you released to them? What have you taught them about ministry or whatever it is? Business. Business. I can tell you right now that, that Brother Jack Gar is a man of his word. He's a man of integrity and he's a man of honor. Not only in the pulpit, but he runs his business in the same way. I'm behind the scenes. I, I come to their house. I'm at their house right now staying with them. And I know how he operates his business. I see how he operates his business. I would have never ordained Jack and Carol if they'd have been in the place of being lack of character and integrity. I don't care how good they can sing and preach. If there's no character and no integrity, then that's what people know you for. That's what they'll remember you for. See? What kind of legacy? Is it a kingdom legacy that we're leaving our families? Our nation. Our generations. Our generations. Amen. The word goes on to say that that when he when he um he did that, he said he 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 gave him that authority. He told him to go. And then in verse uh, 12, he said, Then the Lord said unto me, You have well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. The, the, the word hasten actually means it's a, it's a Hebrew word. It means it means to be alert, sleepless, to be on the lookout. You know, when God gives you his word, he's on the lookout. He, he, he's, he's watching over his word to perform it in you. He's on the lookout for it. He's going to hasten it. He's going to, he's going to give everything it needs to grow. Whatever word, prophetic vision or prophetic word that God's given you, he's going to watch over it. What does that mean? That means he's going to pour into it and pour into it and pour into it. He wants it to come forth. He wants it to come forth. Amen. And so, and so listen, let God have his way in you today. Let God have his way in you today. It's not too late. You're still breathing. It's not too late. You're still here. I don't care if you're 21 or 81. Listen, <laughs> Moses didn't do much until he was 80 years old. He was 80 years old before he finally walked in the purpose of God. Up until that time, God preserved him. He watched over him. He gave him favor. He led him. He fed him. He got him. He put him. He was in the bulrushes and, and he was a baby. He kept him from being killed. He got raised up in Pharaoh's house. All those things. Moses was watched over. But Moses never walked into his the fullness of his calling the fullness of those things that God had till he was 80 years old. 
See? Don't say it's too late. Just let the young people get this. No, no, no. You, you get it. You get it. You get it. The young people need wisdom. They, young people haven't lived life. They don't have experience yet. You know, some are so anointed, but they're dumber than a box of rocks. I'm not saying it against them. I'm just saying that they have no experience. But you do, brother and sister. You do have some life experience. And you're not too old to start walking in the purpose of God. Listen, if I got put in an old folks' home, I'm a, I'd have a revival there. If I, if I, if I still have my mind and I'm believing that I'm gonna have my mind, but if I ended up in an old folks' home and, and of course my girls, they better be taking care of me, and my wife, if yeah, uh, they better be building us a, a, a house out back of their house to stay in. But if I was end up in a in a, a old folks' home, I'd have revival in there. If I still had breath to play my flute, I'd play my flute. If I still had, if it was able to speak, I'd preach, I'd prophesy to people in old folks' home. It don't matter how old you are. So today, you can get this. You can get this. This is yours to have. You need to grab a hold of this, brother and sister. You need to grab a hold of this. What is my purpose? What's my purpose? Without a vision, the people perish. And what does that mean? The the true word, the true wording of that, the translation of that, that means without a redemptive purpose, the people perish. Everything God does, <coughs> excuse me. Everything God does in your life, my life has a redemptive purpose. He redeems us from the works of darkness. He redeemed you from sin. He redeemed you from death. He redeemed you from the powers of darkness to be in his kingdom, children of light, not children of darkness. So everything, without a redemptive purpose in my life, I have no vision. That's what vision is. That's what vision means. It means that that I, I've, I've latched on to the redemptive purpose that God has for me. So without vision, you're going to perish. What does that mean? It means you may exist, but you're not going to be fruitful. You're not going to mature. You're not going to grow. And, and when you die, it ends with you. You haven't left nothing for nobody. You haven't left nothing that's going to be eternally there. What does it gain a man if he gain? What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul, loses his purpose, loses his being, loses his reason for being here? I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose it. Now, I'm not in a fretful thing or, or a fearful thing of trying to do it, but I'm going to tell you, I, 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 I daily or as many times as, as I can and often – I just recommit, I commit myself to God. I say, Lord, you know what? <laughs> do it, do it in me. You know, I, I surrender to you. I, I, I want to live yielded to you. I don't want to be what Grant wants to be. I don't want to do what Grant wants to do. Lord, what is it that you want me to do? Use me, Father, use me. I just want to be your light in the world. How can I do that? And it's not something that and I'm fearful. and it, It's just that I just yield to it and it's my way of life. I want it to be my way of life. And my, and my voice, for those that have no voice, how many of us would sit by and watch, you know, people be abused or people be hurt or people be lied to and, and criticized and we not stand up and we not be a voice for them that can't speak for their self. See? Because we're afraid of what somebody might say or it might, you know, we might get arrested or we might get whatever. <laughs> I spoke out on some things one time and 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 uh people people just got negative to me about it. And uh that's what I believed and I spoke up on it. And I don't I don't use Facebook or any of that stuff for political stances or anything like that. But right is right and wrong is wrong and we need to be the voice of right. 
And we need to be the voice when wrong is done. We need to be ministering justice in the world. We need to do justice, justice things. Acts of justice, they call it. We need to be, be justice people. Not critical, not judgmental, but bring justice to those that can't defend themselves. It's a sad thing to know that this nation is, is right now contemplating murdering newborn children. Are you going to sit idly by and, and let it go? Or are you going to be the voice, the kingdom voice, the kingdom voice? There's other things that are happening in this country that, that ought not to happen because this is our nation. This is the land that God has placed us on. This is where we're at. This is our realm of influence. Our realm of influence. So, so, so are we being the voice? Are we showing the pattern? Are we the ones that's the light of the world? Now, Jesus was the light of the world when he was here. Jesus walked on this earth. He said, I am the light of the world. But then he spoke to his disciples and he said, ye, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. He was the light and he still is the light. But the light's in us and we, and let, let me tell you what, not only is the light's in us, but the light's on. The light's on. It's time for the show to start. <laughs> it's time for the, the showdown to start. It's time to show forth the mighty works of God in the earth. It's time. So, so, so let's, let's yield to God. Let him do what he wants in us. And be filled with the Spirit. Just be filled with the Spirit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release this. And I know there at Buffalo Creek that you guys are going to be praying for people. Some of you need prayer. Others of you right now, I'm just going to I'm just gonna say a prayer and close this and let God seal this. Father, in the name of Jesus, just seal this word. Lord, that we might have that prophetic vision. That we might be confirmed in who we are. And while we're here, that we might have that prophetic purpose ingrained in us and it be part of us. As many as are led by the Spirit, Romans 8, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And Father, I thank you right now. I bind doubt. I bind fear. I take authority over right now. I bind the excuse mentality right now in the name of Jesus. It goes in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that you seal this word in the hearts of all that have heard it. I speak your blessing over them right now. Let them move in the power of God. Those of you that, that are afflicted right now, you're tormented, I, I speak the peace of God. I break the power of that oppression. Those of you that, that need a healing in your body, I speak the stripes of Jesus. That was a prophetic declaration that by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. And infirmities and sicknesses were destroyed. The power of them were destroyed by the, the whipping and the beating and the bruising of Jesus. And so I declare that to you. Freedom to your mind. Those of you who have mental problems right now, freedom to your mind. I break that in Jesus' name. And I just lose the peace of God to you right now. The peace of God that overwhelms and keeps, protects. In Jesus' name. Hey, we love you. We love you. God bless you. Let me hear from you on our Facebook um, ministry page. Okay? And uh, keep us in your prayers. If influenza A, it's not your day. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you.